Well, greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with me and I'm so excited to be back. I'm really sorry we uh, missed uh, last week's episode. I uh, just had a bit of a, a hectic work day and uh, I never managed to, to round things off and I don't want to put anything out there that was uh, sort of half-assed or not done, so uh, no episode last week. But we're back this week and you would have seen in our little uh, preview there that today we are building a habitat uh, for the artfark, another very underappreciated animal I think in uh, Planet Zoo and one I don't often see people building uh, habitats for. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right alongside the flight deck, so that's what we're doing. We're kind of spacing out the, the, the barrier edges of the habitat first. Uh, I thought it was a nice good spot and it kind of squares off um, the uh, sort of habitats that we have and kind of gives us a nice base to work on. I really want to start working on a big safari ride soon um, and this kind of gives us a nice uh, edge of the sort of initial part of the zoo to work off. So yeah, that's the kind of plan. Uh, we're going to do uh, also a little bit of experimentation with a naturally formed habitat uh, in today's uh, episode. So we're going to do a little bit of caving and chiseling and tunneling um, and see if we can get something looking pretty cool here for our art fox to uh, live in. Uh, quite keen to play with this one, a little bit of rock work as well. Not too much of a complicated habitat all in all, but I think it kind of looked quite cool in the end. And the art fox seem to be happy. Talk about art fox, uh, as always we like talking about the animals themselves on this channel um, and since there's not much architecture in this episode I thought the art fox will take center stage so in case anyone doesn't know the art fox, um, which I'm quite proud of, is a very Afrikaans name that is obviously one of the 11 official languages of the country that I reside in so they are a medium sized insectivore, so in other words they eat ants and insects, they live throughout sub-Saharan Africa, sort of my part of the world, and they have this pink grey skin with sort of sparse grey hair, I, I think they're related to armadillos, I, I'm not really sure, but I think they are. Um, they've got these large slender ears and elongated heads, they kind of look like pigs, uh, sort of like pigs with an elongated sort of stretched out snout, kind of, kind of weird looking um, actually. I think uh, the males are obviously slightly larger than the females, but they're generally quite small. They're not the biggest animals at all. Um, and although they're not, uh, I don't think they're listed as uh, dangerous. Uh, they're not endangered, or not dangerous, sorry. They're not endangered. They are pretty vulnerable. They need really large foraging areas uh, in the wild to allow them to acquire enough food. They need those uh, sort of uh, termite mounds, etc., etc. And obviously the expansion and encroachment of farmland in urban areas has really limited uh, their range. Um, so, you know, one of the standard stories might not be endangered, but still we do threaten their uh, environments and habitats quite uh, quite severely. Uh, so yeah, you know, we've got to look after them. That's what I'm saying, you know? Um, I think a lot of them are usually actually killed by farmers who want to sort of prevent them from digging up their land because obviously they dig, dig after termites and everything. Um, so yeah, they, they do do a bit of destruction on that end. And then they also, I think, are affected by pets, pesticides um, that farmers spray, which is also pretty uh, uh, disappointing. Um, but you can often find them in national parks and nature reserves and places like that, uh, normal places to kind of find them. Um, so back to the habitat quickly, you would have seen that we managed to get some uh, of the actual groundwork here. Uh, we're going to place some rocks on it to make it look uh, a little bit better. Um, I think I might have gone a little bit overboard with the rocks uh, in this one. They don't seem to like too much rock, the art fuck, but uh, you know, we got the habitat to a really high welfare state, so I was happy in the end. Right, I think art farks in nature are quite solitary, so I think we're only going to manage to get two art fuck, uh in this habitat. I think they're already in there actually. Um, I think with the exception of the mother and her cub, they generally are very solitary in nature um, and they only kind of interact when they mate or, or compete over mates. So the two in this habitat should sort of wander around fairly individually and not interact too often. Um, on the reproduction side, um, and I think, you know, I don't know why reproduction is always kind of those things that fascinate us as humans, isn't it? Um, during the mating season, the male artifacts, they kind of track the females. The, the females, obviously, they live in these burrows, um, and the male artifacts will track them down, stay them with a few days, um, and then, um, yeah, then they'll mate with them several times during their kind of stay. Um, and then, obviously, the female is pregnant. I think they've got about a seven-month gestation period. Um, I think they only give birth to one cub, 
um, and then they look after that cub for around six to seven months before um, he leaves to, to go off and forage and dig burrows of his own. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty interesting life cycle there. I think it's it's a year and a half and you've, you've got one out, but one at a time, vulnerable animals, um, yeah, we need to look after them and care for them. Um, so yeah, back to the habitat, you're seeing that we're doing a lot of uh, rock work here. On the top, I think I might have gone a little bit over overboard with the rocks, as I said, um, but I do think it looks good. Um, I did. You will see me make some changes later on in the stream to kind of uh, prevent the uh, onslaught of too much rock work there. I think I went a little bit overboard on the ground and all kinds of places like that. We change that soon. Right, so some fun facts about art fox. Uh, art fox only have four toes on their front legs. Um, I think that's because they kind of use them to sort of shovel um, and dig. Um, and their nostrils are, are also sort of really highly adapted for that and they've got these kind of coarse hair and they can sort of completely close them when they're digging in for termites which I think is really a fantastic little evolutionary trait there. Talking about digging for termites, they have this really long tongue. Um, it's like really, really long. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how long it is. You're probably looking around more than more than 60 centimeters, I would say, or maybe not 60 centimeters, maybe around 45, 50 centimeters. Um, and they're sort of sticky, and they use them to sort of stick down through the tunnels um, and, and, and sort of uh, walkways of the ant and termite hills. And then they, because they're sticky, they just kind of lick them all up. It's quite a fantastic thing to Google and watch art fox um, eating. Um, Right, um, art, female art fox, they have this uh, white tip tail, they believe to make it easier, um, people believe it makes it easier for the cub to follow them around in the darkness, because obviously they use uh, the evening and nocturnal times to uh, barge and forage as well, um, it helps to protect them, it gives them some cover, so that's a really awesome nice, like the ostrich, you know, last episode we had the ostrich with their unique colouring to help defend themselves during the day and night, so the art fox with the white tail to help the piglets uh, follow them around, it's also pretty cool. Um, then I think this is probably, I think, the most uh, interesting things about Artvox is that they have a very interesting symbiotic relationship with the, with the, with the species of plant um, that is known as the Artvox cumber, and yes, cucumber, cumber, <laughs> it's, it grows sort of underground and it depends entirely on the Artvox for the dispersal of its seed, seeds, so the, the, I think the art fox is the only um, non-insect food that the, the, the art fox eat and they kind of distribute those seeds around um, as they then walk around and catch ants. I think that's the most fantastic thing. Uh, those symbiotic relationships between plants and animals are something that I find really, really, really interesting um, and quite fantastic and it's really cool to know the art fox have that. Right, so you'll see here um, inside this uh, little art fox habitat, natural, natural uh, hard fox shelter here, hard shelter trying to get uh, the pathways looking good so that they've got uh, they can get in and out. Um, yeah, the rock work here. Yeah, I think this probably took me the longest. Uh, it's interesting. No, no architecture in this episode. No buildings. No building pieces. But uh, yeah, this uh, still was uh, a challenge, especially getting this little ramp here for the guys to, to walk down. Yeah, it was interesting. You got it right in the end, though. You got it right in the end. I also think that uh, the uh, models, uh, again, are very cute. Um, I really like them, and uh, you'll see me go swoop in a little bit later on in the, in the walkthrough and have a say, have a hi, have a say hello, have a hi, have a hello to the two little uh, art folks who reside in this habitat, and you would have seen from those early cinematics that they really are very cute. So um, I'm going to stop rambling now and let you enjoy the music and the rest of this build. And I'll join you all in a few minutes for the walkthrough uh, and a closer look at what we have managed to build in this habitat. Until then, enjoy.
enjoyed that little uh, speed build and me rambling on about the life and times of the artvark. Uh, now it's time for a little bit of a closer look and a little bit of a walkthrough of what we've built. So there is the artvark habitat down the end of the uh, zoo. Uh, we're just going to take a little bit of a look at all. It's really getting quite big. We've managed to expand uh, quite lengthways and I think it's time to start going out very very soon. So let's uh, zoom down to the level of the uh, good old guest, shall we, and take a look at what the artvark viewing might be like. So, yeah, coming down from the wild dogs, or down the path from looping around having a look at the ostriches over here. This is such a lovely habitat, the ostrich habitat. So coming down, you can either take a turn um, up the flight deck over here, uh, which is pretty cool, and you've got some nice views while walking up onto the flight deck of the artvark habitat there. Some of these lovely... Um, termite mounds and in fact there's one of the art fox there coming out of the his home there so there's a little bit of a hole there that goes down into his habitat which is absolutely great and there he is how's it dude he's come to say hello and he's running away he's a little bit scared by us there he's run off down to get some water i think so yeah it's pretty good views of the art fox up here um let's just continue up and have a look at what the other views are up so yep this is the uh, flight deck the first section of the flight deck um, and you got a pretty cool view down here onto the top of the habitat, and they do, they come and play up around on these rocks and everything, so they are able to move um, around about there, so that's pretty cool. Let's uh, zip back down, shall we? Um, there you go, down the levels, and we are back um, down to this level, and then you've got obviously this great view along here of the Artvark habitat. It's uh, just this low wall, I love these low wall habitats, this one meter wall, um, here he is, look at this. How's it, dude? Let's come say hello over here. It's really quite cool. Um, I really like the way that they can come straight up here, and, and everyone's going to have a really good view of the art fox here. They're taking a nice little lie down over there. Um, and this is about the extent at the moment of where the guests can see things. Obviously, there is a staff path that loops all the way around here. So let's take the staff path down up to this lovely tree here and gives us some shade and let's pass through the gate quickly and actually have a look inside the habitat this is this lovely cave that we built um, using the natural ground formations a lot of dirt and soil up there and they love this they love the, the ability to come through these holes and etc let's go up not down through there and then they've also got this lovely entrance over here which is really quite cool they've got a lot of ways in and out of this habitat so yeah that is the art park habitat um, really quite beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed building it. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me do so. Um, and as always, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, suggestions of animals for the future are good. I'd really like to get stuck into a cat area and uh, a monkey kind of area as well. Um, look, there's one of the art foxes. He makes his way up. Let's go see if he makes his way into his home from there. Uh, ooh, yep, just having a look there on the rock. Uh, he's wandering over. Yep, so they do come and play over here, which is really cool. So yeah, back to what I was saying. If you've got any suggestions of further animals, I think we're going to start planning our safari ride here because it's going to be really big. Uh, that will probably be an episode of its own along with some uh, heavy terraforming because uh, this flatland is getting a little bit too boring and we need some variation. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what animal you want to see next. and I will see if I can squeeze it into the plan. As always, until next time, please stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands. I am the Beard, signing out.